All right, today I wanna to go through fields and relationships and object manager, uh, the basic things you can do in there, uh, how I've used it. It's a pretty brief overview today, but I think, you know, this is like one of the fundamental beginnings of Salesforce management. So uh, I'm already in the account manager, object manager. So I came here from uh, to the setup menu and then object manager is a default tab that's always open. It gives me the list of different objects I can work with. And I clicked account and fields and relationships is the second item right there. All right. When you click on fields and relationships automatically fields, it shows you the list of fields that are already established for this object. I can click into these fields to see their information, metadata about the field. Uh, if there's lookup filters defined for them or validation rules, um, which are additional things you can do uh, for these fields, as well as accessibility. So I'm not going to click into these, but the idea here is there are profiles or uh, restrictions and security that you can set on whether certain users within your organization can view this field or not. So um, we'll save that for another video. So uh, let's talk about creating a new field. So when you want to create a new field, it's pretty easy. There's a, uh, you know, like a step-by-step -step walkthrough. The first thing Salesforce wants you to do when you create a new field is to select the type, the data type. I'm not gonna go through the list of these because uh, Salesforce gives a great explanation of each kind here. Um, but there's a wide variety of, you know, uh, predefined data types that you can limit your fields uh, to do. So they're not just all text. So in this case, I'm just gonna create an auto number. And uh, you, have to give it a field label. Uh, if you want to add a display format, you can. Uh, you give it, in this case, as a, since it's an auto number, a starting number. Um, if you already have objects in place, like records in place for this object, you could generate them for existing records. I'm not gonna do that. And then it's also a good idea to add a description and help text. So um, automated number for new accounts. Um, <clears throat> this just helps folks that see the field know um, what its purpose is. Uh, and then additionally, you can use it as an external ID if you wanna make it unique. So like if this is a number that you're going to match with a different system, say marketing automation, and you want to uh, identify records based on this number instead of something else, you can do that. Um, and then you can make sure that the fields are automatically added to custom report types. Um, if this isn't set up for all the custom reports that you build, you'll actually have to go into those custom reports and add the field as an option that you can include in it. So kind of, kind of a weird, uh, a setting I feel like that they've added in there. All right. Uh, next, you're at field level security. So we talked about this as something that we look at differently, but you're forced to set this up when you establish a new field. So you've got your list of different profiles and you can select whether or not you want them visible. So, uh, Unchecked means that these profiles and users wouldn't be able to see it. So I'm just gonna go ahead. And then you can also decide whether or not it's uh, visible on the layout. So like a user might have access to it um, so like from a system standpoint that they could edit it, but maybe it's not like you only need it for reporting. You actually don't want people to see it when they go to the account record. So. Uh, say that this is important for marketing, but not sales or support. Um, then I could take that off. So then I'd click save and then it's done. All right. Uh, <clears throat> one thing you'll notice 
is that uh, by default, Salesforce adds the this kind of double underscore C for any custom fields that you build. So that's an easy, generally an easy way of knowing um, whether or not you've uh, created a custom or not. So you can look, see now, I did this beforehand. I've now created this and uh, they are duplicate fields and we don't want duplicate fields. So I'm actually going to delete this field. So it gives you a nice warning that say, hey, make sure that uh, you know what you're doing. And uh, if you've created dependencies or whatever that you take care of that before you delete it. And I haven't created any of those, so I'll go ahead and delete it. So it'll be kept for a while. And um, like they say, they start to hard delete these after 15 days. Uh, but in that 15 day period, you can access it here and you can either choose to erase it all the way or undelete it. Um, field dependencies, let's create a field dependency real quick. So um, <clears throat> what field dependencies allow you to do is particularly with pick lists, make it so that if a value on uh, what it allows you to do is make it so that if you choose a value in one field, it only shows certain values in a different field. So we are going to select a industry as a controlling field here and upsell opportunities a dependent field. So we'll say that only certain industries have the possibility of an upsell. So now we get to do that. So the industries we've got are agriculture, apparel, banking, biotech, and chemicals. So we'll say that, so you can see here, they give you a nice legend that if it's white and kind of grayed out, that it's excluded, meaning it won't show up, and the yellow will be included. So let's say that uh, for agriculture, we only want it to say no, there's no upsell opportunity. For apparel, there's no. But for banking, there's a yes, no, maybe. For biotech, there'll be a yes, no, maybe. And chemicals, there'll be a yes, no, maybe. So what does this mean? When I go to an account record and I select industry and I select agriculture, then when I would go to the upsell opportunity field, what am I gonna see? I'm only gonna see no as a possible value. It actually lets you preview that. So um, here's my industry. Come on. Agriculture. No. Let's do biotech. There's all three of them. Okay. So we'll just save that. There were a lot more. Uh, is, see, there's the warning. There's like, there's other ones that don't have any value. Do you want to save it anyways? Yep. Yeah. We're just moving through the walkthrough. Okay. Last thing is history tracking. So fields change. And sometimes you want to know who changed them, when, what the previous value was, what the new value was. It helps with data auditing, um, uh, a lot of troubleshooting. So you have to enable it first. And then this section is easy. You can track the old and new values of the fields that you care about. And save that. And then you can build a report then that will look at the old and new values, who changed it and so forth. Um, when you enable, when you set the history tracking, obviously it's only from that time forward. It will not retroactively know um, the changes that you've made to fields, obviously because you haven't been, you haven't been tracking it. So uh, that's, a, that's a walkthrough of fields and relationships. Hope it was helpful.